So I'm making this poster to go around the department and I've got a nice Mac on here, which I've taken from the Apple website, but I want to have the screen of that Mac showing the university webpage to go a bit more sub-branding. Now I've got Safari open here and I've got a nice page and I want that screen there to appear on my Mac. Now I can't just take this and put this in straight because that screen is tilted and it's at an angle. So we've got to change the perspective of the image. So the first thing we'll do is go into Safari and we've got to take a screen grab. On a Mac, just control shift three. On a PC, looking at the print screen button or with different software available. So we're back into here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off my text and my logo, give me just the Mac. Now I've got to take that image, the screenshot, and place it in Photoshop. So file, link, or place, and we've got a screenshot just there, we can see, and place. Double click the image, and we've got it there. So that's the first thing. Now we just got to resize it. So Control T, hold down Shift, left mouse button, click and drag. Now here we want to get this roughly the right size. So put it over the screen and go roughly the same size. Now it's not an exact science here. You can go anything you like, but that's roughly where it ought to be and double click. The reason why we do it slightly bigger is that when you've got files within Photoshop and you downsize them to make them smaller, then Photoshop can throw away the pixels it doesn't need. So you don't want to throw away too many pixels. Keeping it as big as possible is the best way. So let's get into warping this to make it fit that screen. So let's just zoom in a little bit. The tool we need is called Perspective Warp. So Edit Perspective Warp. Now this is with the screenshot selected. Now what we do then is we need to draw a rectangle. Let's start off just going roughly the right size. Now I'm going to zoom in, go to the corners and make sure this is exact. This part here is not so important because if you don't get it exactly in the corners, the whole uh, image will still warp completely fine as a whole. But I find if you go exactly to the corners, it makes it slightly easier to go exactly where you want it to be. So let's go to the final corner here, move him around. So we've now got the area defined. So saying I want to warp this part. At the top left here, we now have to select warp. And what this does, it changes the tool from being one where you say warp this, say actually do this warp. Now, I'm just gonna zoom into the top right corner and we'll hover over the piece. You can see that the icon is ready and we can just take this and drag it and drag it to where we want it to be. Now again, I'm gonna do this roughly, so take it to there, left click and drag this roughly to the right area of the screen. Take this and drag it to the end of the screen, over the top here. That's really far out. Just dragging this round, we've got there. So if I zoom out, you can see that the image has completely gone um, warping. Now to make this exact, just sort of zoom in to the corner and we can go, yep, yeah, that is exact. Leaving a little bit of dither around the edge. Let's go again to here. And uh, again, leave a little bit there just because that makes it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so we've now placed it exactly over where it was before. And click OK. So we've now taken it and added a perspective, but there's one more thing to do. Because if we zoom into the image and get down really close, we can see that this image is a little bit grainy. It's not really clean and sharp. However, our screen is very clean and sharp. So we need to make the, just downgrade the quality of our screen to make it look a little bit more realistic. So we can go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now what this does, it just blurs the image in certain ways. Now we can go really blurred, it almost disappears. So we don't want very much, we only want a small amount. 
Now, if you have the preview turned on, you can see it changing. So I'm going to just zoom in and go to a corner here so I can see the quality of the screen around. So I'm just taking this, add some blur. How much blur do we need to match that? A little bit more. Oh, sorry, I turned the preview on. My mistake. It's a rookie error. So that looks a little bit too much blur. Take it down to, let's say, 1.5. That looks about right. So if I zoom out and click OK, there's not a massive difference. What you do is by blurring the image slightly, it looks like it actually is a part of the original image. So zoom out and I can turn my text back on, turn my logo back on, and now I've applied my image onto the screen. So we've gone from one which is generic and one which is from Apple onto one exactly about our apartment. Now you can use this for lots of different ways and different um, uh, things you're creating, but that's how to use perspective warp in Adobe Photoshop.